twins brawling over Legos, children falling off laundry tables. There's only one man that I know that could deal with all of that. So I call my good friend, child, adolescent, and adult psychiatrist, Dr. Charles Sophie. He's medical director for the Department of Children and Family Services for Los Angeles County. But he was not going in that capacity. He was going in the capacity of a correspondent for us. I sent him to Jen and John's home for a little home invasion. Take a look. I'm here in Oregon where Dr. Phil sent me to meet a young couple who's raising eight children. Hey, they seem to be pretty overwhelmed, especially mom. Hey, come on in. When I walked in, it was really chaotic. It was very disorganized, and I had a disconnected mother. Wanting to see the family in action without interfering, Dr. Sophie watches them from a monitor on an outside deck. Hey, you They're not getting to go out and do anything but they're not really here involved and engaged. After witnessing Jen's general disinterest firsthand, Dr. Sophie decides to sit down with the kids. What's it like to be a kid in this house? Oh, gosh. Awesome. Great. Chaotic. We got dogs. Chaotic. What are the parents like in this house? I'm afraid of John. You're afraid of We're all afraid of Dad. He's really big. He's really bulky. If they would, like, check on us and hang out and play with us more often. I believe we would be actually like listen and behave more. She only really gets up when she hears fighting. Has anybody She's, whole she's telling me that your mom only gets off the couch when she hears noise or something. She just sits there and be grumped all day long and That's how play. Doing that. Then it's time for one on one with Jen. You reached out because it's chaotic. I was done. Yeah. I, I couldn't handle it anymore. And when I come today, I still feel that you're not part of all of this. I mean, you're yelling at the kids, and you're probably scaring them. And your intolerance is apparent to everybody. And that's just not going to be a recipe that's ever going to work for you guys. Oh, definitely, I want to fix that more than any. Why? Because I want us all to be, I want us all to be happy and healthy and enjoy each other. Dr. Sophie came and paid to visit, mm -hmm. and you guys sat down and talked to him. He, you also spent some time with the kids, right? I did. I did. And when you sat down with the kids, uh, what jumped out at you the most? The chaos, but they were really verbal about it. They right. were really very clear about the fact that they want love and attention, and that they're not getting it the way that they want it, or the way that they think they should be getting it. Right. <clears throat> so they know this isn't right. They know something's totally, changed. Totally. They totally know. It's not right. You ready for some good news? Yes, the good news is children are very resilient. You can get a do-over here. You can kind of start and, and lay some things out for everybody so everybody knows their rules, knows their job, knows their role, understands. Because, see, kids don't know how to sort out what the deal is. All of a sudden, they're sharing dad with, with four new people. Absolutely. Uh, plus her and Absolutely. then your kids are sharing you right. with four new people and him right so what do kids say to themselves about that's troubling to kids it's very confusing to them they get angry about it they don't know how to get attention from their original biological parent to begin with and then they got to fight for affection from this other new person what did you observe with jen because you you kind of believe she is she says she has checked out you say it's even gone beyond that i do i, I don't think jen came to this fully checked in I think her mind and heart were somewhere else. And I don't think she thought through it enough to not even to know if she wanted it. But she thought she wanted it. She didn't know if she felt she wanted it. So doing what she thought was right doesn't always mean your feelings are with it. And so the behavior isn't there to back it up and really be committed. Why, why do you think you're just really not all into this? I don't even know. I just, I get overwhelmed. And so I just kind of shut it all off. And if I don't have to deal with it, then maybe it's not there. You came to be um, a, a single mother in what way? My husband, Kyle, was killed in Iraq December of 2004, leaving me with the three older boys. And then um, after a relationship, um, the guy decided that he didn't want any more children and left me when I was three months pregnant with Noah. Mm -hmm. So you, you lose your husband in Iraq, and now you have a, a, another child, and you came to be a single father in what way? Well, uh, my wife passed away in 2008, in June of 2008. Um, 
She died from a complication of medication. We were in a car accident in January of 08, and we went on a family vacation, and she passed away while we were in family vacation. So you two find yourself single parents with, with four children. But answer this honestly, and then we're going to take a break and let you gather your thoughts here. If you knew 18 months ago what you know now, would you have done this? And I'll take your answers after the break. Jen has a female Facebook friend that she talks to pretty much every day. Late into the evening, I don't know the guy. It's just a guy that she met a few years back. He's been a friend, a shoulder to cry on, an ear to vent to. When we first got together, it wasn't real common that they'd talk, and lately it's every night. I don't feel like I talk to him all day long. There's times that I'll go days without talking to him. But when we talk, it's a place that I can vent about the kids that I don't feel guilty. This particular male Facebook friend has been problems with past boyfriends. He's a professional photographer. He's planning on doing a older style pinup photo shoot with Jen in Seattle. And Jen kind of just told me she was going to go up there in October and take photos. and stay in a hotel and come back the next day. I don't think talking to my friend would make John jealous. I do not know why she feels so connected to this guy. It feels like I'm being betrayed. I ask you, if you knew 18 months ago what you know now, would you have done this? Not without doing something completely different. So no. How about you? I would have done it differently, but I would, I still would have wanted to be where we are, but not necessarily where we are. What you're saying is, even though it wouldn't be low maintenance, if you'd done the right things, you would still have taken the plunge. Yes, I would have. If, if you would have prepared for it. Yes. What's your reaction as professional to this Facebook situation? I mean, the bottom line is, and I've shared this with both of them, that that's an emotional affair. And unfortunately, it's sometimes worse than just a physical or sexual <laughs> affair because her heart is gone out of that bedroom and her head is somewhere else. And to justify the fact that it's okay to go and get her picture taken, leave her family, not think her husband would care, is a disconnect. What, what do you think about that? Um, hurt. So you're, it's not okay? No, it's not okay for him. It, it, she didn't ask me, she told me. And no, it's not okay. Well, I'm so glad to hear you that because for a minute I was thinking I had awakened in bizarro backward yes. world <laughs> or, or something here. You know, first off, have you ever met this guy? Yeah. And what did you think of him? That he's a good friend. Yeah. Where'd you meet him? Did you go up there or did he come down here? I happened to be in Seattle and met up with him while I was over there. Uh-huh. And um, where, where'd you meet him? At the mall. At the mall? Does, does any of this seem odd to you? I was a lot younger then. This was 2001, 2002. And so it, it's a friendship that's continued over many years. So, so you've known this guy for 10 years? Mm -hmm. Were you going to go with her for this shoot? No. I mean, several reasons. One, it'd be very hard for the 10 of us to load up in the van and go up. Well, it wouldn't be as hard as it would be for my wife to get out the front that's, door that's right, that's right. if she was getting ready to go load up and go somewhere that's right, that's right. <laughs> to be right. to be part of a pinup photo shoot with some guy that she talks to on Facebook on a regular basis because you know it would be there'd be a lot of packing to do you know I'd have to pack and get ready to go we would have to stop by the mental institution have right. her committed. <laughs> Uh, would have to put me in if I was allowing this to happen. I was just, just come on. Guys, there's just something wrong in America when common sense is just not common anymore. Um, here's what we've got. We, we've got a marriage where you've got eight kids and no plan. It's turned into complete chaos. Your sex life is non-existent, and she's going to go take a scantily clad photo shoot with a guy she knows on Facebook. Gee, what could go wrong with this? Be honest. It's an escape for you, right? You need the break. I do need a break. You need the time. And I need a friend. You and need a friend. He's pretty much the only one I have. Yeah. 
but you've got a pretty good friend sitting next to you, but somehow or another, <laughs> you've decided that he's no longer a candidate? I've just checked out from daily life. Listen, there can be order to this home. If we get you some resources to help with that, some people maybe to come in and, and, and help with the family meetings, to help set up uh, you know, some little chore charts for the kids that they can take great pride in and where when you walk into the house, it's not like it's on fire. Would that be a help? Would you take that help? Yes, absolutely. Because you, you need it, right? And the kids responded very well, didn't totally. they? They're loving kids. They love both of their parents. They feel they're a team. They don't really see, her kids don't see him as in, you know, not their parent and vice versa. They're willing to be loved and create a solid team. They really are. Yeah, so you got great kids. Yeah. They just need some leadership, right. and they didn't get it from y'all coming into this, right. but as I said, it's not too late. Right. Um, now, also, it, it is tough with eight kids. So to give Jen and John a night out, we've arranged babysitting services through Nannies for Hire, which is an online nanny referral database where you get to make the decisions. So when they want to go and enjoy an evening out, all eight kids will be taken care of. And we're going to make that available to you every week for the next six months. Okay? So, and you got to take advantage of it. Every week for the next six months, then I want you guys to, to let these nannies come in, take care of the kids, and y'all go out on a date and flirt with each other, see a movie, have dinner, act silly. Don't get pregnant. Right. <laughs> all right. We'll be right back. Well, I want to thank all of my guests. Uh, listen, when we talk to people up here, we talk about things that we know you want to hear about. And as we were talking about y'all's story, uh, I promise you, there are so many mothers out there that feel a lot of the things you're feeling. They just don't have the courage to say it out loud. You said it out loud and risk the judgment and all of the, uh, the baggage that comes with that. But in doing so, You've reached out and some help is there and we're going to really rally to your to your assistance and and give you some help Just starting with you. It's time to be selfish on your behalf and 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 do some healing with you Are you glad you came here today? Yes. Um, and as you know, we've got help coming your way and I want you to use those nannies don't ever miss a time All right, go out and do that and a special thanks to Dr. Charles Sophie. Uh, really appreciate your work in visiting their house and, and looking into all of this. Um, moms, go to drphil.com and let me know what problems you're facing when blending a family, scheduling activities for your kids, or if you just feel overwhelmed like you want to go check out. Uh, I've posted resources to help overwhelmed moms get through their days on drphil.com. You can speak out on our message boards. Uh, you can find us on Twitter and on Facebook. I'm always interested in what you have to say, so I look forward to hearing from you. Thanks a lot. We'll see you next time. Thanks a lot, guys.